Hey, what's good YouTube? It's Brody here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I made my new song, Fell Victim featuring Dementia. I'm going to run through all the different parts of the beat, vocals, etc., and like just how, how I made it. So, I think the first part I'll dive into is the bass guitar, because that's kind of how the song starts. So, what's funny is, I mentioned this in other videos in my Patreon, I think, that I don't own a bass guitar, despite so much of my music being like heavily emphasizing bass. So what I do is I, let me turn off all the effects that we have going on here. I just take my um, electric guitar and just play single notes on the low E string and then run it through a octave down. Do some processing and throw it through a bass amp instead of an electric guitar amp. get this really like honestly believable like high gain bass sound I think the stars of this tone are the STL tone hub um, just really nice dark glass emulation um, and then I'm using this purple audio 1176 just to like really get the get the dynamics to be like as solid and steady so this is a main part of the song energy wise I didn't want there to be like any like pumping action I wanted to just be like as straightforward and solid like dynamics wise as possible so yeah I start with that and um let's see here so the intro we got that going on we have this choir sample that I use throughout a majority of the song it um by itself it's just like a bunch of different vocal layers that I have and then I half timed it through some um, different effects on it to like really put it like in the background give it some texture give it some momentum with like the um, filtering there let's see here we have some halftime guitars. I'll get into the guitars later just because there's a lot going on. But I made an ambience by just like throwing halftime on this guitar part. It's a whole bunch of layers of guitar in this song. Also have this ambience sample going on throughout the whole song just to kind of like set the mood for it, put it in a space. I did some mid sides EQing on it and I cut the low end out just in the mid, so it gives the super weird like side information in the low ends. And I thought it kind of helped it fit in the mix more without taking up any space, like with the band playing. And like, normally it's weird to leave that much low end in the stereo frequencies, but I felt like because it's the sound of like an ambience, it's more realistic that way, just like hearing loud loud like low pitch noises all all around but yeah i have that going on the bass guitar the choir going on i think next i'm gonna move into drums i really loved the drums on this one most like simplistic um drums i've done in a while and they're all just very like gritty like darker tones so um i'll start i'll just solo like the hook out we start with my the my kick. It's the go-to kick in my drum kit, my most recent drum kit. I use it literally all the time. I feel like it's so versatile. Whether it's like trap stuff or more um, like darker stuff like this. But I have that. This like really gritty snare. Really sparse hi hats. I love this hi-hat. It's just so dark for a hi-hat sample. Very quiet, and it's less like felt and more heard and just like adding momentum to the track. So we had that ambience in there. Get the bass guitar in, which I'm also side-chaining the bass guitar. I'm side-chaining a lot on this song to the kick drum just to really give it like a almost like housey kind of feel and keep the momentum going. Kind of makes you like nod your head. Got the choir again. A little bit brighter than in the verse. 
also hit with the side chain. Then we have this synth. That one I really like. I'm using um, Expand for it. One of my favorite synths. Super cheap, super versatile, and really good mixing like within it. So I have it higher in the hook than the verses. It's pitched down. Just fits fits the mood really well. Nice little like counter melody to the vocals that wind up going in. And then um, I guess next the the next thing I'd talk about is the guitars. So I already showed the um, side uh, the um, half timed stuff that's like ambience. Then I did these like two um, wide, super distorted and delayed guitar parts. They're like harmonies of each other. So then, a little bit lower. And what I like about the guitar in this song is how like washy it is. Like everything kind of becomes one big pad or one big layer. It's less individual guitar parts. Like I feel like in the final version of the song, a lot of these guitar layers are not really that heard. Like now that I've pointed this out, you can probably notice it. But get some high, high notes which is the part from the verses without halftime. And then the power chords. I love the tone on this, super crunchy and distorted. Yeah, it's um, emulating a Marshall amp. And I think I have some reverb and stuff on it too, yeah. But yeah, all together, it just be, kind of comes one thing, especially with the bass. That guitar tone with the bass together, it's so nice, I love that. And then we'll move to this section. I hang on this chord, it's the um, flat six, and it's I love it because it adds so much like anticipation because the whole time you it, you want it to hear it go up and resolve. That's what the chorus starts on. Or no, it doesn't. But right there, which then leads to the next phrase. So I just stay there and like keep the tension going. I don't know. That's one of my favorite parts of the song, honestly. It's so simple and just like hanging on one note was so powerful. And I think my favorite part about that section, which is the one thing it looks like I haven't shown yet, I wanted to save it for last because of how excited I was about it, is this like guitar solo thing that happens in the post chorus. I'll play it and then I'll play it soloed. It's just so hectic, so like loud and intense, so much like like pain and like crooning and all kinds of emotion tied to it, you know. I love at the very end how it like rises. Kinda like fades into nothing there. But what that came from actually, the wildest thing ever, it was before any processing a like organ keyboard pad and that's literally it it's just this sound and the thing that I used for it which I definitely recommend I think it's one of the coolest uses for this plugin is little alter boy which I know a lot of people like to use myself included for doing pitch shift um, for your vocals and things like that but you can get some really cool things when you like push it past what it's supposed to do. So this reads monophonic, so it can only read one note at a time. And when I play that organ through it that is like a chord, 
it has trouble re- reading. I like as the harmonics change in the sample, it has trouble deciding which is the note that's playing because it can only read one note at a time. So it starts freaking out and going like every different direction and um, makes this sound effect, which is so cool to me. Now the trick was I set it to quantize versus transpose because quantize makes it automatically hit the, um, it like kind of adds like auto tune to it, if that makes sense. So it's only going to hit the notes that are there. But yeah, I did that. I cranked the drive all the way up because the distortion on this is honestly really nice versus without. And yeah, that's it. It was kind of a happy accident. That part of the song sounds like I'm doing some like really intense like automation and stuff. And really, I just like lucked out and loved the energy and mood of that. It kind of created itself. But yeah, that's essentially the beat side of everything. Um, all the different elements together. The verse goes again, Dementia's part goes in, we get the hook again, uh, it plays through twice with added, oh yeah, this like string sound that I have in the verse and then in the hook, just as like an extra layer. You can mostly hear it here. Just like the mood of it, it helped out. And at the very end, um, we have this like chord change where instead of going up like you expected, it goes down. Which I feel like adds to like the, it's just sort of like a, I don't know, it fits with the lyrics and all. I like the journey. I view um, notes and like emotion and like payoff and whatnot in songs similar to like the direction the notes and chords go like typically like if i'm wanting something to imply that it's happier i'll write some a melody or a chord progression that's ascending and then vice versa i'll make one descending if i want it to be like something a little bit darker so that's kind of what my, what my thought process was there and yeah so that's it on the beat side i'm going to close the session and open up another one with the vocals and show you what's going on with the uh, vocal processing so I think I did some cool things there. Yeah, so this song specifically, the beat had a good bit of processing on it with all the guitars and whatnot. So I had to export it and then I did the vocals in a different section or a different session that is. And um, yeah, honestly, very simple. I've been breaking from my norm and how I write vocals and been with this song, along with you will always be a part of me. I did very simple, like no vocal layers. I, my thought process was like, when I do a pop song, I'll do a ton of layers, but this song was already so dense that I wanted the vocals to A, be kind of quieter in the song, and B, take just fit in the pocket in the middle because there's so much going on. I don't want to overdo things, and I don't want the vocals to overshadow some of the cooler like instrumental elements going on. So this vocal tone is really similar, honestly, to my tone from You Will Always Be a Part of Me, except on a lot of the parts I'm not doing the pitch shift up an octave. I felt that um the I really liked the emotion from that I just that I discovered from the last song with doing some like stereo widening and reverb and effects before the compression and like the kind of unnatural wideness that it gives you. So I wanted to try that again with this and just make it very kind of processed and weird. So you can kind of hear in like the high notes, like the breathy, like the ah, kind of parts that it's kind of shifting left to right in the stereo field. And I thought that was really cool, especially because it's just one vocal. Plus it's just super compressed. And then I'm using Soothe pretty heavily. I mentioned before, sometimes I like to use Soothe, kind of similar to how I use Little Alter Boy. I use it 
more like different than I guess its intention is. And I'll set it really harsh if I want to get a little bit of distortion out of it. Tell me what would you give to have everything? I fell victim to it. It just again adds to a little bit of like digital artifact weirdness to it that I love. And then on the hook, it gets bigger, wider. I so I'm side chaining it, so you can hear like the pumping motion. I'm side chaining it, but I also take the sample and just repeat it. So the where I say it, it just is the same thing over and over. Just to really emphasize that rhythm, you know. And talking about how I didn't I wanted to keep it digital and weird and I didn't want any layers I did want some harmonies to fill out the hook so what I did was I set them as a different buses that I took little altar boy and I they're right here I don't know if they'll play without you can hear a little bit of it there but yeah I have two different melodies that what I did was I programmed them in. One is playing the same thing the whole time. One is hitting some different notes. I did some automation. If you set it to robot mode, it'll only play one note and then you can draw out manually the notes. So you can see. I think it's a really cool effect. Yeah, I love that sound. Oh, another cool thing I like is because this is so hard auto-tuned and right on pitch, I wanted to give some naturalness to it. So I used um, um, Echo Boy by Sound Toys is probably my favorite delay for vocals, but you can choose a bunch of different styles of delay. And the vibrato one specifically is great because all the pitch um, wobbling in it really helps. It's I find it a little more interesting sometimes than just throwing a chorus or some or some other kind of modulation on it's a cool effect that makes it entirely not hard auto-tuned and sound a little more I can take cool. I can take love that vocal tone then we get in the post hook i do I sing, I sing the same thing, and this is really like my tone from You Will Always Be A Part Of Me. I added a octave, um, octave up, and then I'm really cranking the delay, and it kind of, it delays set to ping pong also, and it just really widens it. Oh yeah, and I'm doing, I'm doing a huge delay swell. You can hear now where I'm at, the feedback is going crazy. Yeah. You can hear how it grows. I felt like this is a great way to add suspense, add energy. Then I fade Dementia's vocals in. And he killed his part. I love the processing. He mixed it. I just added like a little bit of extra stuff on top to fit it in. But all the creative stuff was him. Very ambient, kind of like lo-fi and weird. Fits perfect. All the chorus and phasing and everything. So cool. And then I think the next cool part that happens is on the second time through of the hook. This section. And what I'm doing is similar to the last time I'm throwing an octave up on. And then I'm also... Um, pitch shift I'm doing some more chopping and pitch shifting and what I do is I have 
instead of automating, because that was just going to be time consuming, I made a different track that had a pitch shifter that changed it to a certain note. So each phrase, this is the original phrase, and then this is a certain note, the same with that and that. part was really fun. I love that style of vocal chop. It's just fun finding like the cool sections that you think have a cool tone, like a nice tonality to them and just like repeating them a ton. It was fun. I'm gonna go back to the same high pitched zony stuff with some more, same as before some more automation to rise it and make it more hectic along with dementia singing too and it just is a ton of energy building and building and building and then if you see here i'm doing a hard cut of all the volume so it's building and building and building and then absolutely done <laughs> I love that section. It's just so, like, the whole song, really, but that's kind of the climax of it all. It's so repetitive and, like, almost hypnotic in a way. Kind of, like, just, like, repeating, like, a mantra over and over. Except instead of it being, like, a positive thing, it's, like, just how, like, a more negative emotion, which I think is an interesting flip on that. And I don't know. I really liked the... I wanted with this song, too say more with less i felt that the hook just being the same five words over and over would i can't well yeah i can't take it anymore five words at te technically but um just repeating that over and over again because i was just trying i was trying to express a thought and i felt like the more i tried to express it with like vivid language the less I got away from the emotion because I was just busy thinking about how to portray it. And I felt that just repeating that over and over really made it more like just pure and like raw to how I was feeling. I think that sometimes it's better to just be in the moment than it is to overthink like the perfect way to tell something and just like be real. Like if you're feeling that type of way, you're not going to be really like analyzing the best way to explain your thoughts you're just going to be like repeating that to yourself or something i don't know i'm trying to approach lyricism in different ways whether it's by studying it more or just entirely throwing it to the wind and just like being like the first thing that comes to mind rolling with that and sticking to my subconscious i feel like it's been really powerful for me specifically but yeah that's my song, Fell Victim, featuring Dementia. I This is probably my favorite song I've done thus far. I, I don't know if I'd take that claim, but it's definitely high up there. So excited about it. So um, so happy that it seems like y'all are liking it. It means so much. And also, if you've made it to this point in the video, thank you for watching and supporting. It really does mean a ton. Um, yeah. Thanks. I'm glad you like the song. If you like videos like this, I'll link it in the description, but I have a Patreon where a few times a month, at least, I'm posting longer form videos of me describing my process or mixing a song from scratch, making beats, etc. Just like really get into my mind and my process. I feel like I'm just trying to get all of my, like just show people how I do everything and see if that can be of help. We also have tons of cool like free drum sounds, an active discord, some loops sometimes. I leak songs early in there. It's a fun time. But anyways, yeah, thank you guys so much. It means the world, seriously. Peace out.